I sadly watched and I reviewed Venom The Last Herd, and today I want to do a spoiler video breaking down all the intricacies, all the brilliant writing styles that are infused into this film. So if you haven't watched Venom The Last Trash, definitely hold off on this video unless you don't care, which I would say that's wise. That's smart to save your money on this. And we can both go on this journey together. Road trip! Right now. spoiler videos I'm going to go off of my memory best recollection I don't look things up I tell it to you how I recall it sometimes I'm wrong and I think we can forgive I think we can forget I certainly forget but you know what I always remember to encourage you to subscribe to this channel Adam does movies I'm I'm Adam of course uh, I post movie content every single week reviews roasts sometimes live streams and it's all for you all the time and so I'm doing a public service right now, hopefully by saving you a little coin in your pocket to tell you exactly what's happening in Venom, The Last Ass. The film fires up on all cylinders with a giant exposition dump about the symbiote, who created them, where they came from, and most importantly, where they could end up, which is six feet underground if they don't take care of this evil creator. At this very moment, there is a prison planet housing a super bad dude who created the symbiotes, and he also created hunter creatures to go after his babies. And the only thing keeping him from running amok is essentially black glue that's holding him down. Just, just some of that black venom shit that's holding him down. But unfortunately, it's not gonna hold forever, fam because something has been created back in Venom 1 that can actually free this asshole. It's called the Codex. And how it works is very simple, not convoluted at all. When a symbiote chooses a host and they bond, and then that host dies, but then is resurrected by the symbiote using a free life or something that they get one time only, a Codex is created in the DNA. And if the villain, I think his name is Null? No, I don't know. He, he's, he's a blonde dude, kind of looks like an elf. Apparently he's very powerful. If he gets his hands on this thing, he can be free. That, that, that's how it works. Like, that's, that's just how it works in nature. So he's going to send out his hunters all across the vastness of the universe to find this codex. And I say it was created in the first film because that's when Eddie Brock died for a little bit. But then Venom brought him back. Using the power of love, of course. It's the power of love. We've only covered three minutes of this movie. All of this was thrown at us right away. It's so good. Oh my God. All right, so now we are drinking our lives away in Margaritaville. In perhaps the most embarrassing crossover event to ever take place ever. We see Eddie Brock and Venom transported into the MCU Tom Holland Spider-Man universe. Remember that happened in the end credits of some stupid movie? And so there he is. Venom's at the bar with Eddie Brock and they're drinking away. But it doesn't last long as a multiversal door opens up and shoots these assholes right back where they came from. And on the way, Venom gets to make a super edgy joke saying, Oh, I'm so sick of this multiverse shit. <laughs> Classic funny Venom. I'm so, honestly, I'm so glad that Venom and Spider-Man never fought. This version of the character sucks so hard. He is constantly whining and joking throughout this entire trilogy. This one is by far the worst. He's a comedian, but like the worst kind. All he does is the lamest insults like, You suck. I want to eat them now. They're stupid. Let's kill them. This is like edgy humor for an eight-year-old. Which reminds me, that's the last time my son, who's now 12, had any interest in Venom. The Sony Spider-Man cinematic universe that doesn't have Spider-Man in it has managed to take the coolest villain in Spider-Man and degrade him down to nothing. Congratulations, Sony. You played yourself. But back to the embarrassment that was this whole thing. They built up the idea that these paths would cross. Venom would fight Spider-Man at some point. They took the time to do this big reveal to get him over there, only to have a lame joke kicking his ass to the curb. 
because no one wants to see this anymore. It's embarrassing what Sony did to this character. And that goes doubly for Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock. What a terribly written, terribly performed character. To quote the great Bully McGuire, you're trash, Brock. All right, so we've established there's a codec and the villain has essentially Google Maps activated. So they just have to get within a certain mileage of it for the hunters to, to really start tracking it down. Now, before I forget, later on in the picture, one of these giant spider symbiote things is going to spot the codex and he waits to the final act to alert the others. He could have put out a siren call instantaneously as soon as that thing pinged, but now he waited. He waited until the final act. He's like, ooh, we don't want to blow our load early. We better let this build up a little bit first. And then I'll call him in. It's good. That's just, that's just smart. It's perfect. Um, also, you'll be super thrilled, super jazzed to know that Venom in this film does almost no fighting at all. He runs like a coward because these giant spider creatures are, are way stronger than him. He can't put up a fight. And so, yeah, he's just going to run away every single time. The only action scene he's directly involved in is right out of the gates when I think the writers or someone decided, oh God, we don't actually have these two jackasses doing any saving or protecting or whatever they pretend they do. And also there's no action scene where Venom's doing anything cool. So let's have them hear dogs bark and we'll have them bust into this location where they see a bunch of caged pets and they have to fight four or five bad guys. That'll save the film. And they do, and Venom gets to eat all four of their heads, which I will say, in past movies, they couldn't get away with this. But either A, you can stretch things further nowadays with PG-13, or B, they just don't care like most people about Venom anymore. So they're like, yeah, do whatever you want. Sure, PG-13, who cares? There's going to be an ongoing uh, joke in this where Eddie Brock can't keep a good pair of shoes on. He loses his Crocs early on. Then he gets some sandals later. He has cowboy boots at one point. Actually, I'm really triggered in the middle section of the film when he loses one of the cowboy boots and he continues to walk with just one boot on. Th that throws off the equilibrium. Who the hell does that? Who walks with one shoe in the middle of the desert? Take it off and go barefoot. It's ridiculous. You look like an idiot. Uh, but Eddie Brock always looks like an idiot. And in this movie, he's nursing a hangover for the whole film and he calls it out like six times. Oh, this hangover. Oh, I hate this hangover. Why? Why am I in these movies? Why do they make money? I don't understand. Venom's like, shut up. Shut up. We need to bite heads off of people. Um, I'm edgy. Shut up. Oh my God. I'm already forgetting mecha cringe levels of stuff going on. <laughs> when they're at the bar a while back, Eddie Brock jumps over the counter to mix a drink himself. The bartender taken aback when he sees all the Venom tentacles come out and start mixing shit. <laughs> and it's like messy and it's disgusting. The bartender just sits there flabbergasted, doesn't leave. He's just like, well, well that's new. Talk about Mondays, right? <laughs> he sticks around the whole time, even after the guys head out. But don't worry, Venom leaves a generous tip on the counter, along with some of his symbiote, which I guess he's shedding. This is something they're doing now, they're shedding. And this is important because it's gonna play into the B plot. Out of the A through E plots we have in this thing, the B plot is uh, second to none. We're gonna be following a new character, Dr. Payne, which she has experienced in her life. Uh, we get a beautiful flashback, very tastefully done, where her and her brother are out on the beach, uh, jabbing it up, looking up at the stars. He's very smart, apparently. He's gonna be a, a NASA something or another. It's all green screened, it looks terrible. And then a storm hits and they flee and the brother grabs her hand so that the electricity from a lightning bolt that hits her goes through her conducting into the brother. It's like the scene from Home Alone 2 where Marv grabs the battery. He turns into a skeleton. Well, that doesn't happen, but that would have been hilarious. Would have been better than this. Anywho, she works for Super Secret Area 55, which is uh, caddy corner to Area 51, which is being decommissioned in a couple days. She drives through a waterfall like she's fucking Batman, and they go down an elevator shaft into this uh, underground facility where they're housing several different symbiotes. The colorful liquids are floating in these containers. Keep in mind, they have established earlier in this film that all of this has been taking place within a year. 
Venom and Eddie Brock have only been together a year. And since that time, they had the whole chaos with the first movie. They had the Let There Be Garbage movie. And apparently they've been on the run now, framed for the murder of someone from the second film that I already forgot about. And this facility has been constructed to look at all of this Venom stuff. It's, it's a uh, lot's happened, all right? I don't know what you accomplished in the last year, but man, they're getting a lot done over there in Venom world. Much like the first film, they do have a test subject. They're using the symbiote on to see if it will pair with him. They finally get one to work. Not that it matters because later in the movie, everyone's able to pair with everything all the time. He turns into a, a new creature named, I think his name is Blue or something, something basic. And, and Blue is like, we're not the bad guys. We're actually good. Even though in the comics and stuff, we are the bad guys, but no, we're good here. And there's a much worse dude that's gonna come down and kill all of you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And this is where our general comes into the mix. I mean, he's already been in it, but this is where I'm gonna introduce him. You know what, it's unfair to call him a general. I don't know what his command is, but his name is Rex. Rex Strickland, and he's a very strict man. He has put together a team, a suicide squad of sorts. He calls them the something six, like it's supposed to mean anything at all to the audience. Maybe the comic book guys know what this is, but he says it a couple times and I didn't care either time because they always get bodied right away. So there, there's no like threat there. There's no excitement when he says it. But Dr. Payne and him seem to be a little bit at odds along with one of her colleagues, Nova Moon. Nova's defining characteristic is she has a Christmas brooch uh, that she wears all the time. This is an important piece of information that we need to know as an audience because I, I don't know, but they felt the need to put this dialogue in the film. These two are gonna have a bigger role by the time this movie winds down. Let's hop back over to Eddie Brock and Venom who are very much on the run. At one point, they try to go fast by flying. Eddie Brock's on the side of a plane. He makes a reference to Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. It, it's, it's all fun. Everybody's loving this movie so far. And then one of those hunter creatures finds them, jumps onto the plane, and they have not really a fight. It's more Venom hopping around like a dipshit before he jumps off. He parachutes down in one of the ugliest looking green screen effects I've seen in quite some time. And the spider creature up top's like, curse you, Venom, I'll get you next time. We're then going to seamlessly and expertly transition to our new family. That's gonna be another focus of this film in our C plot. I think his name is Martin. I'm gonna call him Marty for short because it just, he seems like more of a Marty than a Martin. Uh, he and his family are on a road trip where they've spent all their remaining budget to go to Area 51 before it gets shut down. They're big alien fans. They want to see an alien up close. They believe they will at 51. If this guy would have just looked up for a second or checked the rear view mirror, he would have saw an alien smash right behind the car. <laughs> These guy, this guy. We do kick into an action scene. Strickland found out Eddie's location and he and his team are in pursuit. Now I did go take a piss break right before this. So I don't actually know how he found their location. I also, it doesn't matter, it's inconsequential. They're chasing him around. This is one scene in the movie that I enjoyed because there's some creativity going on and it's having some fun. Venom, disattached from Eddie, is swimming in the current. Now this is an important plot point. When Venom and Eddie are fused together and Venom is able to take his full form, that's when the codex is available and that's when they can ping their location, the, the creatures, the hunters. But if Venom stays inside of Eddie or just out externally, they can't find them, which seems very easy to hide from these people, but it turns out, no, it's really hard, especially when Venom needs to play the slot machines or dance the night away. We'll get there. Anyway, chase scene occurs. It's kind of fun in the water because Venom is hopping from animals. So he jumps into a frog at one point. He pops into a fish who then eats another fish, making him larger. This stuff was cool. That was, that was a great 45 seconds of film. Later, we will get Venom horse. I know that was a big thing fans were excited for. He becomes a horse. It looks kind of cool. And they run around and skip and hop and jump for a while. Eddie's hanging on. Yeah! flying in the air. I didn't sign up for this. Bad, bad. This action sequence ends with that hunter creature jumping down, fighting off some of the army guys so that Eddie and Venom can escape. I pointed this out in my regular review, but I like these aliens. Their design is really cool. They eat people and then they shred out the back in blood. 
This film was able to get away with a lot for a PG-13 movie. Again, I think they just don't care. Eddie's gonna show up at the campsite, of course looking completely unhinged and dangerous, as he always does. Marty doesn't seem bothered in the slightest because he's a couple fries shy of a Happy Meal, but he invites him over to the campfire to have some grub, which Eddie of course says, yes, I'm starving, takes the plate, throws it over his shoulder. Marty's still like, yeah, that, you know what, that's a normal sensible thing that a human person does. Why don't you jump in our RV and road trip with us? Where are you headed, friend? What? In what universe is anyone going to see this sketchy dude walk over, throw a plate of food, act completely unhinged, and then say, hop on in the car, let's go for a ride with my family, my wife, and my two children. Since it's been established that the stakes couldn't possibly be higher for these two idiots, they're going to go ahead and put it all on Vegas. That's right. It's time to slow things down. It's time to get away from all the chasing and action and just have a good night out. But Eddie's gonna find a nice tuxedo that fits him perfectly by knocking out a guy that pissed on his hush puppies. That's a Frighteners reference for the one of you that knows that movie. And he's gonna look pretty dapper going into the casino. And this scene is a very good example of how comedy does not work in these movies for me. As Venom gets super excitable like a fucking toddler, can't control himself, starts putting in the $1 bills and pulling down the slots, hitting the button, doing it again. He's like, Rah, more, more, I'm winning. We're going to win, Eddie. And Eddie's just annoyed by it all, but he can't control it. He's like, Ugh, I can't, I can't, I don't even know what to do. Bad. But if you thought Venom, the last bowel movement couldn't get any worse. She's there playing the machines too. And she's been winning big time. They put her up in this beautiful penthouse suite. She's getting all this stuff comped. And she just happens to run into Eddie Brock and his lovable mischief companion, his sidekick Venom, everybody's favorite. She's begging them to come back to her place so they can dance and have a good old time together. Which of course they do because they're on the run from not only the government, but also super scary giant creatures that can kill them instantaneously. Yeah, I think now's the time to dance to ABBA. Friday night and the lights are low. Not only do they boogie the night away, but there's also a remix feature on the jukebox and Venom smacks it. So it's like... Dancing queen. I blacked out at this point. And when I came to, I found out from one of the other moviegoers that I had actually died for several minutes of cringe. The, the cringe killed me. But I recovered, and thankfully just in time, because we are going to get to the final moments of the movie. So it turns out the dancing was not a great idea. And the alien thing shows up, crashes into the suite, doesn't even have a chance to fight, though, because the, <laughs> because the secret Area 55 guys are there, too, in a helicopter. What is going on? How are these people all here at the same time? They capture Brock and Venom. And now we're back at the super secret facility. Remember how I said Dr. Payne and Nova Moon would have a bigger role to play in all of this? This is it. Nova, in her infinite wisdom, decides to hide Venom inside of herself. And it's a good thing she did this because Eddie Brock was on his way out. Permanently. They were going to kill him. She powers up into female Venom. Oh, that's a transformer. <laughs> Remember the all-important Christmas brooch I brought up earlier in this video? Well, it turns out it is super important because that's how this Venom gets the red and green colored liquid skin. Wow, that's just good writing. She takes out some of the security guards. Venom hops back into Brock, snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. And this is our final showdown. The timing just couldn't be worse because the hippie family has shown up as well, snuck under the fence into Area 51, and they're up in a tower so they can get a better lay of the land, hoping to get a sneak peek at an alien. Yeah, right. Like, there's going to be any aliens at the most obvious place ever, Area 51. Good luck finding... Oh my god, there's a bunch of aliens. Spider creature's there. He blows through a wall with Venom and like 12 other Venoms. What? Yeah, all the symbiotes that were in that secret laboratory were freed by Payne and Nova, and they're hopping into random scientists who are completely compatible right out of the gates. 
Maybe this was explained, but I swore there was like a process to get this to work. I didn't know it was instantaneous, but maybe it's just being able to house them for a certain amount of time. It doesn't matter. We have a bunch of Venoms. And this is the time when stupid spider alien decides to <laughs> call out to its dear leader on prison planet and send the others down his way. And so now we have a bunch of these spider creatures. There's venoms spinning around with blades. <laughs> Blue venoms doing a bunch of cool shit. <laughs> while our heroes, Eddie Brock and Venom, run away and hide. That's what I love about these guys. They're incorrigible. Uh, no, they do see that their friends, their best friends, are up in the tower and the tower is about to crash down. So Brock and Venom think fast. They swing up there. They grab them. Some of the other symbiotic creatures help out along. They make a slide. It actually looks very fun. They slide down. It's, it's a nice time. But after a bunch of explosions and action, Brock decides the only way to make this end is for a good old fashioned sacrifice. So they hop on a conveniently located motorcycle as all Area 51 places have. They drive up a conveniently placed helicopter blade, do their iconic mid-air Superman for no reason, land and pile up the spiders in this little kill box. Rex Strickland knows what's happening and so they put all the firepower right on this area while Venom and Eddie take one for the team. They get cut up pretty bad. So they go inside the busted helicopter, they have a heart to fart, talking about the good times and how they wish they could have saw the Statue of Liberty together. Oh, that's a big part of this, Jesus. I. <laughs> <laughs> the E plot is that Venom really wants to see Lady Liberty. I want to see Lady Liberty before I die, Eddie. Eddie, I want to see her up close. Uh, so yeah, I really hope that wish comes true for the, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I also found this incredibly funny because Eddie is like half dead. He's got a slice through his stomach on the side. Meanwhile, Rex gets impaled all the way through the back and out the stomach by a giant whatever, tentacle thing. And he's still going fine. The dude should have like a giant hole that he looks down through, but he, he's still going somehow, he's kicking. Just when it looks like all hope is lost, there will be not one, not two, but Trey saves in a row. This is in no particular order, but the first is when the giant bug creature plants for attack He's about to kill our protagonist, but boom, boom he gets hit, sideswiped by a truck, driven by good old Dr. Payne. The second save of the day comes from a missile launch into the side of another bug, which blows the head off by no other than our boy Marty, who was saved and left with his family, but then came back, found a rocket launcher, and blew the fuck out of that creature, gives a tip of the hat, and then leaves again. The third save comes after the final touching moments. Venom decides it's time to go, Eddie. He pulls in all of the spider symbiote creatures, stomping around, and he goes into a central area where Rex Strickland can drop a bunch of acid on these creatures, killing them once and for all. Venom takes a door hinge, puts it on top of Eddie so that he doesn't get killed by the, you know, the remnants, the spray back, whatever. And he's like, goodbye, my love. And he puts his little disgusting tentacle up to Eddie's window like they're recreating the scene from Titanic or some shit. And he dies. Mm. But it looks like Eddie's going to die, too, because boom, the place blows up like the 4th of July. And this is where our third save comes in. Dr. Payne had her own vial of symbiote. This is Mountain Dew purple electric version. She cracks it open, turns into a purple venom, who's also supersonic fast. So these aliens are defeated. That means the main villain that was teased at the beginning of the film that's supposed to be this super all-powerful badass who is played by Andy Serkis for some reason never shows up. We don't even really get to see the guy. He's got his face side profile with his hair hanging down. He's all disheveled, really pissed, gonna cause a bunch of chaos, but no. 
never goes anywhere. Why get Andy Serkis for this? My only thought is that Sony actually thinks they're going to make more of these films. And don't worry, they will. They will. If this makes a bunch of money, absolutely more films are in the works. And just because Tom Hardy might be done with the role, you have to remember we have a new Venom in the mix. We have a strong female Venom! And for the Sony Spider-Man cinematic universe that doesn't have Spider-Man in it, it's about time. <laughs> what an absolute embarrassment of a movie. Not only that, but lest we forget, they also previously tried to build up their own stupid cinematic universe by having Vulture come in and talking with Morbi shit. I don't even remember what movie that, I think that was at the end of Morbius. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. It doesn't matter, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Goes nowhere. What a disaster. And the sad reality is people people eat it up. Now that our heroes are safely out of harm's way, hero Flash Venom can take off and hopefully show up down the road for her own set of films. How exciting. I also like that she has lightning powers because she had that run in with lightning with her brother back in the day. It's a really come full circle moment. Beautiful stuff here, powerful stuff. The movie's gonna end with Eddie Brock just thinking about the past taking in this last whirlwind of a year, walking slowly at the camera, while the movie overlays clips from the previous movies, and not just two or three, I'm talking 15 of these stupid moments where we're seeing Venom and him up to their little hijinks, fighting bad guys, having their touching heart-to-heart -heart moments. This truly is like the ending of one of the Fast and the Furious movies. Only thing missing is Vin Diesel and Paul Walker driving off into the sunset together. It's been a long day without you, my friend. If you found yourself crying during this moment of the movie, you may be an idiot. We're gonna end this masterpiece of a trilogy with Brock getting to show his best friend, Lady Liberty herself, as they stare off in the distance. And the credits roll with some bizarre song playing. It's upbeat, it's crazy. Is there an end credit scene? Good question. I'm asking you that. I didn't stick around to find out because I'm done with this shit. The Sony Cinematic Spider-Man universe that doesn't contain Spider-Man in it comes to an end. Oh wait, no, we have Kraven next. And potentially a female Venom spinoff series. How, how, how exciting. Kill me. All right, that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comments if you watched this thing, what you thought about it. Like the video, please think about subscribing to the channel. Again, I post movie reviews, spoiler videos, roasts, occasional live streams every single week. Would love to have you stick around for those. If you love this one man band and you wanna give back, I would appreciate it immensely. Become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. There are different tiers with different offerings, 300 exclusive videos and counting though for any tier level. And then there's just a bunch of extra perks if you're at the higher levels. Now we should probably pour one out for Venom. Some think he's still alive. Well, that's determined based on the box office numbers. And so far, not looking great. Not looking great, Eddie. It's almost like a Richard Nixon. I am not a crook. <laughs> Bye.